Talk about it, talk about it, talk about moving. Carnivore. I should have thrown in. Talk about carnivore. Uh, notes don't hit the same. We'll write something. <clears throat> yeah, when are you going to learn to play that song from Royal Blood on the bass? Oh, man, that dude's wicked. That That's some nice stuff. Like, that's, I mean, you know, Lemmy kind of played that way. I think not as extreme. Uh, I think it's more his voice, you know, the way he matched. He's, he's got an, a very unique voice. I mean, he's got a great voice. Yeah, he's a he, he, great voice, and he's just in, uh, an incredible bass player. So I don't know. Now, I on. used to play a lot more like that when I was younger, but I felt silly because no one else was playing that way, and it was really hard to find people to play with when I was when I was playing like that. So it's something I experimented with before, and so that's why I'm not surprised that someone found a way to do it. Now, my voice is not nearly as good as his voice, so it's probably better that he ended up being a, a big person to do it instead of me. But I was working on it. It was for real something I, I, I was doing. Gotcha. I'm sure many people have experimented with it, but you know, to really do it as, as a way of songwriting of, of uh, something that comes out that structured uh is 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 very cool you know yeah um let me just do the the intro since we're we're talking about music and bass guitars instead of meat so welcome back to another episode of these crazy people that just eat meat and can't stop talking about it it's tom and justin once again and today we decided um because we get this question all the time <laughs> and uh i did a we did a video a long time ago called uh, carnivore 101 and i thought we did another one about how to get started or whatever and then i looked and i couldn't find it i was like what the hell so anyways today's topic is uh how to start this whole carnivore craziness yeah we're gonna talk about it talk about talk about getting started that one fit a little bit better i'll, I'll keep that's a little it. better you're doing a little yeah. better so yeah. so uh yeah there's a lot of people out there there's all kind you know the the thing about about the advice i hear sometimes about getting started on carnivore and this, this is true of other diet modalities as well but um some people are like one size fits all you've got to do this you've got to do that and um seems to be to me from my experience that um getting started right really depends on the person right you can't just throw uh you know eat ribeyes five times a day <laughs> or eat five ribeyes once a day whatever <laughs> whatever the case may be and throw that at everybody so how about you justin what do you think um, you know, well, I think it's committed to your why, you know, so the old, uh, was it <clears throat> Nietzsche, <clears throat> Nietzsche quote, um, with a why one can endure anyhow, I think is, is the quote. Um, and so your reason, right? So I'd, I'd make that priority coming up your reason as to how come you're doing this. Uh, if you don't have a good enough reason, you're, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, I started because, well, I was in severe pain uh, two to four days a week and couldn't do anything. That's why I started. Um, yeah. For for other people, maybe their reason's not severe. For other people, their uh, reason is uh, more of a difficult life struggle. So I'd say that's number one: is just writing down or having it in your head, having it on a post-it, your why. Maybe it's you want some knee pain to go to 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 go away so you can play with your children more. Maybe you're tired of getting up every morning and punching your cat because you know you're having these. Uh, glucose spikes and falls in the morning or something like that. Uh, maybe you want to get started because uh, your doctors actually try and punch cats. I, I imagine so. Yeah, I would imagine so, you know, um, or, you know, uh, your doctors told you, hey, if you don't get this under control, you're going to be going blind in six years. I don't know. There's so many different things. Uh, Maybe you are married to someone and they take their health a little more seriously than you. And maybe they've inspired you. And instead of moving towards resentment, you want to move towards courage and change. Uh, many different reasons. That's up to you what your why is. I feel like getting your why structured in a foundation is, is very important. Um, 
Next, uh, I'd say would be goals, what you actually want to do in a reasonable time frame to accomplish it. Yes, yes, everyone has the uh, goal of looking like Mark Wahlberg in Boogie Nights. I, I understand that. That's that's my goal, too. A hundred percent. But, <laughs> you know, that that depending on where you're starting and your genetics and things like that, uh, that may not be a, a realistic goal within six months. Um, so yeah, but maybe it's just, uh, hey, I want to eat better. And then you got to define for you what's eating better. Now we can give you some guidelines. I think a great place to start is just getting rid of or no longer buying processed foods. Um, I truly think that's a start. So if it comes in a bag, if it has a, a paragraph line of ingredients, I suggest don't buy it, you know. Um, a good rule that I used to follow but even before carnivore was uh, seven ingredients or less or five ingredients and less um, if you want to start as just a initial goal. Um, and then, you know, uh, it just kind of scales from there. Uh, how serious are you about getting rid of fruit and veg? How much do you like? How much is fruit, veg? Or I could say complex carbohydrates. Uh, how much bread, how much toast are you having each day? Um, then we can start there, titrate that down. Um, you know, a, a good rule of thumb is knocking it down by 25% uh, over a month to a week's time um, of what you would eat in a day. Now that requires some tracking in the first week of just, now that's also a great way to start is just getting a tracking app. I personally like Chronometer, uh, Fitbit has its own Fitbit has its own tracking, not a huge fan of their program. I like Chronometer. Um, and just you can start by literally tracking what you eat every day for a week the best you can, as accurately as you can. And then so that way you can be like, okay, here's where I'm starting and where do I want to go? Um, if you're listening to keto and carnivore people, of course, the nudge, nudge, push, push is to reduce carbohydrates, increase meat, fat, and if you prefer veggies, um, and that would kind of be more keto. Um, and if you want to be really cool and uh, get closer to looking like Mark Wahlberg, uh, then you know uh, we would say dropping the the fruit and the veg and and just go all meat. So yeah, that's kind of a long and short of it. We can get into the dirty of of the practical from there. But yeah, I'd Tom, like to, I'd like to circle back on you know how you started here you know, um, your why, because in the why is important for, for two reasons in my mind anyways. Number one, it's your core motivation, right? You got to remember why you're doing this. But the other thing is you have to set goals, right? I, I see this all the time when it comes to people, uh, when you talk to them about how they're eating or how they're exercising or going to the gym or whatever, and you realize they don't have a goal. It's not oh, I want to be able to run farther or faster or lift more or, you know, I want bigger biceps. Most of the time, I see people go, well, I eat this and I eat that and I go to the gym twice a week. And when I go to the gym, I'm like, well, what is the point? Sometimes, of course, their only goal is to be, is to, quote, lose weight, <laughs> right? And then... You know, and then you to, offered them a hand axe to take off one of their arms. <laughs> yeah, and then you try and get into the conversation of like it's really about altering your body composition, right? And you know, weight is just a number, and it's kind of irrelevant when it's not in context, right? So, and uh, I, I, just because you brought it up, I'd I'd really like to uh, just I guess I'll state this now. I was saving it for later, but I'm a millennial, so I have no patience. Um, <laughs> I am almost to the weight that I started with when I started carnivore th over three years ago. Uh, when I started carnivore, I was 154 pounds. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm sitting at about an average of 148 pounds, uh, which is like, but everything, but like everything fits better. You know, I'm gaining weight, but apparently it's like lean muscle mass and not like a bunch of fat which is like crazy that I'm almost back up to 154 
and everything is fitting fantastic still. Um, I've been steadily rising uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, and I know a lot of people typically freak out about it. There's a part of me that wants to freak out about it. Um, but I say, shush, Valley girl, shush. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just rolling with it. Um, and I just think that's that's crazy. So when I first started Carnivore, I actually dropped all the way down to 132 pounds. And I've been going back up since roughly my first year of carnivore why don't you explain a little bit about what's changing your composition uh i was gonna say something terrible right now but i decided to restrain myself um <laughs> we're probably all grateful for it and hope we don't know why yes absolutely well i think it's a great workout regimen and and packing away the protein um really i think is what it's about um, yeah though just, it's different about your body other than then your weight went down and went back up. What's going on? Um, well, I, I you like to back on a bunch of fat or what? No, it's more muscle. That's what I'm trying to say. Like it's lean yeah, muscle. That's what I'm trying to get you to say. <laughs> get, get to the point, please. <laughs> lean muscle, pack it on lean muscle, you know? Um, uh, did you have an espresso before the, you came on here? I did it. I didn't even have my nap. I told you I watched Boogie Nights. That's what I did before this. And I did beat a boss. I did beat a boss on a video game. So I did get a nice serotonin bump from that. When you say you beat a boss, what does that mean? You beat your employer or you beat somebody? What, what do you mean by boss? So I've been playing a video, a video game. You, you old man from the Stone Age. Um, and I beat the final boss. It took me like an hour and a half of playing to beat him. And I died like 12 explain, times. Explain the phrase boss to this old man, you millennial. The, the, Spastic. <laughs> the antagonist of the game is who mm -hmm. I beat. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was made of origami paper just so you know. So it was so quite he, difficult. It was difficult to beat somebody made out of origami paper. Yes, magical origami paper. He was, act, in fact, the origami king. He was. The origami king. Yeah, not even Bowser could beat him. I, he needed my help. Wow. Yeah. Well, I guess we're all grateful to you for a number of reasons. There you go. You should be. Defeating absolutely origami. Agree. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, so let's circle back to the original topic here. How to get started, right? I mean, I'm sure people are going to watch this and they're going to want some basic tips, right? Let's try to do some basic tips here. Uh, let me start by saying that I try to figure out what type of personality a person has because some people like to jump in head first. They're going to go through their kitchen and they're going to throw out every carby, nasty snack that they shouldn't eat. All the sugar's gone and seed oils are gone so on and so forth but some people need to ease, ease into it and that's not such a bad thing because anytime you drastically change your diet you're gonna you could have diarrhea or constipation or sleepless nights or whatever so you know you could just start by by saying okay you know for lunch today i'm only gonna eat meat see how it goes it goes good tomorrow um lunch and dinner only meat and day three, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, only meat, right? Could be something like that, or you could just start cold turkey and just, uh, I'm just going to eat nothing but meat from here on out, right? And and sort of the basic technique is a lot of people start very well if, if their, their diet is basically half fat and half protein. However, that gets confusing because people describe it two ways. They could mean half their calories from fat and half their calories from protein or they could be mean they could be saying i'm physically going to eat it by half of the amount of weight of food i'm eating is fat and half of the <laughs> amount of protein i'm eating is you know so let's say we're measuring in ounces or grams or something and, and i think that confuses people in a lot of conversations and we, we've touched on that before in the past right because you got two people Describing a 50-50 diet and once talking about total calories and of course fat has more than double the calories of protein 
And uh, so if you're talking about by volume, you're eating way more calories than half, right? Have you noticed something like that, Justin? What do you normally, how do you normally get people started? Yeah, so, um, you know, it kind of splits between males and females. I think males are more apt to just chowing down on some meat, like, oh, I love steak, you know? Um, it's just about getting past the mental blocks of, you know, plant toxins, carb addiction, processed food addiction, things of that nature. Um, females tend to be fat phobic and meat phobic. Um, you know, a lot of females are vegetarian or come from a vegan background. And so, you know, they just think, oh, I just don't like meat. You know, they just kind of have it like psychologically in their head that they don't like meat or it upsets their stomach, which it might be. It could be that they've dampened the uh, biome uh, in their stomach to process meat well, and that can is, sometimes cause some. Is the biome anything like the biome? Biome, biome, biome. <laughs> uh, and uh, that can cause some meat aversion. And even people that start eating meat, they sometimes have meat aversion. Um, it can feel boring. And well, I like to start with people is the emotional mental connection. And thank you for uh, 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 folding cards while I'm talking, John. Very awesome. Love it. Yeah, folding cards. <laughs> I was going to say dealing cards or shuffling them is what it sounded like. Yeah. No, I'm just uh, adjusting some controls here. Oh, all right. Trying There's to level out odd, the audio. Odd sounding controls, but all right then. Well, I, had to uh, move, I did have to move some things out of the way. Welcome everyone to the Carnivore Attention Deficit Disorder Podcast. You might as well just rename it. Um, hey, the I emotional. Got of, I got a lot of technical stuff on on my side to deal with, and you talk really loud, so I'm trying not to blow anybody's eardrums out over here. Um. So I personally like to start with the emotional mental attachments that people. Any freezes. <laughs> the mental emotional <laughs> attachments to food uh, in regards to, you know, what are they feeling? Are they an emotional eater? Is their eating related to stress response? A lot of people are, uh, and this stems from childhood. Hey, you're crying. Hey, kid, want a cookie? Is a lot of childhood experience or a Snickers bar or let's go get some chocolate ice cream as like an answer uh, to all of life's problems. Um, turns out to be similarly to alcohol, can be a cause of and answer to a lot of life's problems. Um, and so that's kind of where I start, you know, and I try to get people, again, if they're not a fan of it, individual, but journaling, right? Do it keeping a feelings journal. Even if you're a dude, yes, we have feelings. And seeing what you feel before you have a craving for a food that at this time you're attempting to currently not eat or quote unquote avoid. Uh, so that's where I like to start. Now, there's also managing the social aspect. So unless you're antisocial and a hermit like me that lives alone, uh, you probably live with other people. And that can be a very challenging part. Um, now, I used to live with other people, but I cast them down into the mountain of Moador. No, I'm just kidding. I just moved. moved to your fourth story uh, penthouse. Moved to my fourth story uh, penthouse. Very Hugh, Hugh Hefner like mansion on top of a building. Right. There you go. Um, and, uh, you know, now I had practiced with other diets, I was paleo. I was kind of plant-based before. And so I'd already worked up the ability and the skills to say no to a lot of foods. So I'd already had that before I went carnivore. Uh, but if you're new to saying no to your favorite foods, quote unquote favorite, uh, that's something you're gonna have to practice. Um, because if you do live with other people, it's very rare that an entire family changes diets unless you're the main provider slash head of household slash uh, king, king of the castle or queen of the castle, then maybe you can make it happen and throw everything away. That's not approved. Um, but yeah, so, so the temptations, right? And so when it comes to temptation, because that's the key, is what do you do when you're tempted? What do you do when you're stressed? What do you do when you really want that donut, that ice cream, that 
uh, fr- those fries, right? Um, so I, I think two things that work really well is a have meat prepared more than you need. Um, in the beginning, I just had stacks and pounds of meat ready to go. I had burger patties, I had bacon, um, I had steaks, um, all like cooked, you know, for like two to three days ready to go at all times. Um, so that way it's like you have an option. You need to give yourself an out. Um, and so uh, that is one way to do it. Another way is uh, just running around being so full all the time from your approved foods that you don't want anything else. Uh, as Sean Baker used to say, eat enough meat to where even if um, someone gave you, put a cupcake right in your face, you wouldn't be tempted. Uh, that's what I like to call the Sean Baker method. Uh, that's another way to do it. Um, I, I see someone in the chat talking about history of eating disorders. Uh, that kind of depends on what exactly the eating disorder was. Now, when it comes to eating disorders, I honestly think there's always a big mental emotional aspect to it. Um, and, and I would suggest that person to do some childhood exploration, possibly work with a therapist or a counselor um, to see uh, what the, whether it's binge eating. Uh, now there is when it comes to anorexia and uh, bulimia and specifically, um, those are about 70% of the time in the literature. Um, linked to some kind of sexual abuse as a child, unfortunately. I know it's stark to talk about, but um, it happens more than, than most people like to talk about. Um, and so that, that can be a, a serious hurdle. And, and for that, um, you know, I, I would suggest you know, getting a, a good, good counselor uh, on your side. Um, social yeah, groups. Um, I was just going to say that... Uh... Um, I kind you know, where I disagree with you is that, uh, it seems in my experience that like when it comes to personality, it's actually seems like I've dealt with more women that were, that wanted to jump in head first than guys. And it seems like the guys were the ones that were a little more cautious about starting, you know, and, and that kind of surprised me, you know, um. Well, and I'm like Christina comment in here. She just started eating steak and then, you know, Bella was that kind of way that way too. And that was kind of a surprise to me. So I just kind of like, I don't make any assumptions, you know, based on, I mean, gender well, what, what my, 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 irrelevant. it's more, you know, it's more about figuring out what the personality is like and how, how secure they are in their decision to try something new. So. Well, I, I just meant, now you understand I'm, I'm from, well, you're from California, but I mean, my generation. Where are you lot, from? I'm also from California. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, well, like uh, the LA sheet crowd, I was in the vegan community, you know, and like all that stuff. So, and, you know, I had a sister that was vegan for a long time. Um, my mom primarily lived off salads, chicken salads, right? And so I'm just taking from my generation, and I wasn't talking about starting necessarily. I was talking about more likely to be afraid of me or having issues digestively with me because of long pronounced eating more plant material versus men. Men typically are always pro meat um, and typically have more exposure you to eating so. meat. I'm talking averages. All right, we'll have to run the numbers on that. Yeah, there we go. But anyways, and Bella I mean- and Bella had already practiced being vegan, and that's another point: is that if you already build up skills of how to change your diet drastically you will then translate to having an easier time yeah, translating stealing to lines. carnivore <laughs> no that was my entire point <laughs> you just didn't let me finish no i said that like a million times already so there bad justin bad 
Punish. So welcome to the breakup episode of the Meat Mosaic. <laughs> <laughs> Irreconcilable oh. differences. No, it's not. It's not that they can't be reconciled. It's just that you only copyright royalties. <laughs> hey, just for that one joke. But you had your opportunity yeah. to throw it out there, and you didn't. No, you haven't given me too many opportunities. Man, that's for sure. You're on fire today. <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, w let, let's talk about like actual meal suggestions for people who are getting started, just basic practical stuff. You want me to start or you, you yeah, wait? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Just, just give us a, a quick synopsis. Uh, so I think ground beef. Now, here's the thing. I think starting out. So long as you don't already believe that you have a dairy allergy, I think starting out with dairy is helpful. Maybe not so much liquid mi milk, but I think cheese, if you've always eaten cheddar cheese or Swiss cheese or provolone, whatever your cheese is, I think keeping that in is a good idea. Um, it's a great condiment for carnivore cheese. I mean, ground beef with butter and cheddar cheese is just divine in my opinion um or steak with some cheese on top or steak bacon and cheese that's the thing about carnivore is that when describing the meals they can sound almost decadent and uh what's the word of gluttonous but they should i feel like especially in the beginning because you want it you want to make carnivore as pleasurable to yourself as possible uh, especially in the beginning. So one of my beginning breakfasts was uh, eggs with cheese and ground beef. That Try was not my... to move too much. You're getting a little pop on your mic. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Slow, deep breaths. Come back yeah. to center. Yeah. So I'd like to try and find out what, what kind of stuff people already like, you know, because, I mean, some people love fish or pork or, you know, obviously beef is easy but i'd rather see somebody get started even if they're eating you know just hot dogs and hamburgers than to not get started you know because i think it's really important to just establish that habit for a month maybe more you know and i'm with you you know it's, it should seem you know a, a decadent or appealing you know you should be looking forward to it right and i personally i love to eat shrimp so if, if you're somebody who can tolerate, you know, a higher protein diet, shrimp's a great way to go because there's basically no fat, no carbohydrates. And most people love shrimp. And of course, as Forrest Gump tells us, there's a lot of ways to cook shrimp, right? Right. I like I like to just eat the plain boiled shrimp all the time. And I think it's delicious. And, and, and some people, let's say, uh, maybe you can afford it and you want to eat lobster or crab legs. Hey, why not? You know? So, I mean, everybody tends to eat a little bit of pork unless they're kosher, you know, or something like that. So that's okay too, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, are we doing a, a boiled shrimp challenge as well? Is that what we're doing? How many pounds? Who can pounds? eat the most boiled shrimp? I'm down. Let's put it, it on has the to list. Be in, has to be in pounds. <laughs> Joe said that he would not do the, the chicken milkshake. He said, I'm out. Chicken shake? Chicken shake. Ooh, chicken and heavy cream. That might kill me. I don't know. I'll yeah, do I don't know if I actually was going to put milk in it. I was just saying milkshake because it was going to be blended, but maybe we'll come up with something. Maybe, yeah. Chicken cordon bleu in a, in a blender. <laughs> a little ham and Swiss in there. Yeah. There you go. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, all the animals are on menu. <laughs> Basically, if you can grab it, uh and put it on your plate uh go for it uh we have international friends that do goat uh for religious reasons and cultural reasons uh, a lot of goat regional our, reasons other, perhaps regional regions yeah yeah and so, our friends in new zealand and uh australia they tend to eat a lot of a lot of sheep or lamb so it's very cool yeah which is all ruminant um that's another thing too the most nutrient dense the quote unquote best animals to eat are ruminant animals. Uh, these are your multi-chambered animals, uh, really good at converting grasses into uh, nutrients. Uh, so your cows, uh, your 
buffalo, your lambs. Yeah, by uh, by rule of thumb, the ruminants, is the animals that have a rumen that converts grass into, you know, fatty acid chains, or they uh, are kind of the staple for most people. So that's a good place to start, but it's certainly not a rule, right? And I think people get that impression like you have to eat beef or something like that. You have to eat beef or lamb or you're not doing it right. And I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, if you don't have an allergy, can you think of any reason not to eat seafood? Right, right, exactly. I mean, and there's some some nutrient things, uh, but that's not, we're trying to do a beginner video. So let's not yeah. get too deep in the weeds. Well, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, you leave, you leave it open, right? You don't have to, you don't have to think that you have to eat, just start by eating beef, right? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I've seen a few posts where people were doing chicken and Diet Coke and ending up in the hospital. So there is a things that you should not do. Um, so how do what, what happened? Why did they have to go to the hospital? I think their electrolytes got all kind of messed up. Mm. Yeah. And they ended up in the hospital. Um, yeah, Raymond Neff says uh, he's doing grilled pork chops, wings, chuck steak, and ribeye. That good. sounds like a nice variety. That is a nice variety. Um so, you know, you probably don't want to be doing only chicken. I don't think anyone would really want to do that. But there are some people that run with some chicken for quite a while. I don't recommend it. There's not enough fat. That could be problematic. Um, fish is great. Um, you know, again, white fish is kind of more protein to get enough fat. You would have to throw in some salmon, although I'm not so much versed on fattier fish maybe tom is uh, and i think that's why we recommend the ruminants uh because ruminants typically have everything that you need fat protein ratios are solid as well as nutrients whereas when it comes to uh everything else down the train uh tain down the track i'm just gonna yeah there we go that's, that's just, I'm just throw the tang on the chicken sink would you <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's some tang on the chicken sink in the blender. Um, is the reason why it's not as recommended is because there could be quote unquote nutrient deficiencies if you go more or slowly uh, avoid ruminants. Let's put it that way. If you're avoiding ruminants and you're not even salmon and you don't do eggs, you might run into issues like freezing. Now I do know. A couple of people that have a beef allergy uh, slash like ruminant allergy and they have a hard time and they seem to do great on mostly pork with some eggs. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's why uh, it's it's touted. Um, but, you know, some pork with some egg, you can pretty much get everything. Some salmon, some egg and a bit of pork, you can get everything. Some chicken. I mean, you can mix it up that way and, and totally get everything. And herbs and spices are okay in my book as long as you don't notice something severe. Now, I think once you're adjusted to carnivore, you're, you're able to put on the carnivore suit and you're able to feel comfortable eating only meat. Um, I do suggest a two to three month period of no dairy and no spices just to really get a good reset and baseline of your body to see what you may or may not react to. Uh, that yeah. And then see, I kind of take a different approach to that. I tend to recommend people that they take those things out one at a time and see if they right. notice any difference as opposed to just trying, especially when people are trying to get started. You know, I think one of the things we both tell people is don't do too many things at one time. Right. So just establish the, the habit of eating the meat and then, you know, do try and do things one at a time. I mean, if you're going to, um, if a lot of times people start, you know, change their diet and, um, then they feel better and then they want to be more active and there's nothing wrong with being more active, but don't start getting up at three 30 in the morning and going to the gym twice a day or <laughs> try fasting and a bunch of supplements and, you know, uh, or just adopt somebody else's eating style because, you know, there's a lot you can eat. I think there's all that much concern about, you know, eating too much seafood. And we haven't even talked about eggs are fine if you tolerate eggs. Some people have issues with egg whites. 
there's nothing wrong with eating eggs. And, and like you mentioned with milk, just straight milk by itself tends to be obesogenic, right? So if you're trying to get leaner, you probably don't want to be drinking milk. Um, and of course, dairy is complicated in general. So if you know you tolerate butter or you want to have some cream or, you know, some cheese or whatever, that's fine. But it can be very problematic for some people, right? Yeah. And uh, one of the feelings that comes up often is people feel like their meal or their day is not finished unless they have dessert. Um, and I think a dessert that's carnivore, that's easy is, uh, you know, um, eight, well, six to eight ounces of milk with two ounces of heavy cream. Um, you get some sweet, you get some fat, um, you get something satisfying. Um, again, not going to help with your well weight loss goals but if you really need to that psychologically that dessert is the end of the meal it's the end of dinner it's dessert you're used to having your dessert that's a great alternative to nearly anything else now you can jump into creating your own carnivore ice cream but that can be quite the project and anyway that yeah and like you said if you eat enough meat in your meals you tend to lose interest in the desserts and stuff like that yeah you know? so that's a good strategy Right, exactly. And so, you know, I, I'm I'm of the harm reduction model, as in what's the less harmful choice here? So if you're onto a friend's house and you know that they're going to have pizza with all your favorite toppings, uh, you didn't, you forgot to pack something, you don't feel like fasting, go to the nearest market, grab an eight pack of hot dogs, a pack of, a pound of turkey meat, um, hopefully your buddy's got a grill, if not, and just chow down on some hot dogs and turkey meat. I mean, yeah, it might look a little awkward, but um, that's better than eating the pizza. And so it's about harm reduction, in my yeah, opinion. You know, uh, one of the things uh, I encourage people to do when they're eating stuff, like, you know, if they are eating hot dogs, and I always say it's better to eat a hot dog than a Twinkie. Um, hot dogs in general generally aren't that bad. Um, the bad stuff that's, that's in them, like maybe there's corn syrup or starch or sugar or something like that, and is usually very minute quantities. But hot dogs tend to be one of the higher fat meats that we eat, believe it or not. Like hot dogs tend to have way more fat in them than like bacon, which surprises people. So I tell people, you know, just take a look and see how much protein versus fat you're eating and just kind of kind of understand because – when, when, even when I'm talking to people about steak, they don't realize that the red meat, separate from the fat, that's only maybe 25% protein. The rest of it's essentially water. So when you eat, you know, a pound of steak, let's say it was a giant lean piece of sirloin, um, a pound of that, you're getting four ounces of protein out of it, you know, and a lot of people aren't aware of that. Whereas it's, the fat tissue is almost all fat. There, there are, there is other, um, you know, connective tissue and stuff like that in there and some water, but the fat is very, very much, uh, mostly fat. Whereas this red meat, the actual muscle meat is, you know, ballpark 25% protein. So that's uh, same thing. You can't necessarily read the label on a steak, but you can look it up. You can just go to USDA or whatever, and it'll tell you there's all kinds of sources for nutritional data. I will caution you that when you look up a steak and it says like Barney Steakhouse, blah, 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 a lot of those things, they're not just plain meat. They've been marinated and they're served with something and blah, blah, blah. They're cooked on a grill that's seasoned with olive oil or whatever. So those numbers will be off. But if you look up the values for the plain meats by themselves, you'll learn pretty quick and get an idea of how much fat versus protein you're eating, which is kind of the key thing, right? That's your eventual, eventual goal is to get a sense of how much fat and how much protein you need since you're presumably not eating carbs anymore. Yeah. Next topic is, uh, what do you cook stuff in? Uh, you know, a lot of people are used to doing an olive oil smear or a canola oil smear or avocado oil smear on their uh, pl pots and plants before they uh, start cooking. Um, 
So, I mean, if you tolerated butter before going carnivore, uh, most likely you will continue to tolerate butter. I think the majority of us carnivores just cook in butter because it's economical and makes everything taste quite good. And you get some salt, which is good for electrolytes. We'll probably talk about that in a minute, balancing electrolytes. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, butter, of course, um, bacon grease some people use. Um, you can buy um, fat just from the store, duck fat, pork fat, sometimes beef tallow as well, which is just processed beef fat, typically suet. Um, all that is acceptable uh, for cooking your food in. Uh, you can get an air fryer, which would require uh, no, uh, what would you say, uh, no cooking oils of any kind typically, depending on what you're making. Um, I make personally um, uh, some great shrimp and some great chicken. Um, in the air fryer and I don't throw in any oils or anything in it, just the natural fat seem to cook it great. Uh, and uh, that's another thing, cooking tools. Um, air fryer, I highly recommend. I've got the Ninja Foodie Grill, I love it. Um, I don't do burgers in it. I don't think burgers in an air fryer come out too well, uh, depending on the one yeah, that you have. I usually tell people, you know, I ask people what type of cooking they're used to doing. You know, whether it's on the stove, on the grill, you know, and where I live grilling, people grill year round. So you were talking like a, a barbecue type grill or a barbecue or a smoker. And so I start with that and see what they're familiar with, you know, cooking on the stove. A lot of people are used to just throwing stuff in the oven. So I, I try and help them by just just uh, starting with um, whatever. Uh, whatever type of cooking they're used to. And then of course you can always give somebody tips on new ways. Uh, air fryers are really popular these days. Uh, they're quick, they're easy to clean up. They have a timer. That's, that's one of the things that's really changed now is you can get something like an air fryer or a small convection oven that has a timer on it. So it shuts down at a certain point. So you're not going to totally incinerate your, your dinner if you're not standing there watching it. And a lot of, you know, the fancy smokers, too, if you've got like a Traeger or something, they're very automated. So um, that helps. But that's kind of advanced stuff. But I like to just kind of find out where people are at, like what kind of cooking they're used used to doing. And, uh, you know, because it makes it easier to get started if you're in familiar territory. So um, I try and tell people just to kind of keep it basic. But I also tell people they really need to be thinking about what they're going to eat the next day because if you're let's say you're in the range of 1500 to 2000 calories worth of, of food a day that's what you're typically eating you need to kind of plan ahead because it's really tempting if you run out of food or you don't have it with you when you need it to just you know stop and get some sort of sugary snack or a bag of chips or whatever the stuff you're trying to get away with so i'm kind of big on meal prepping and I like, I like to help encourage people to think ahead. Um, in my case, you know, I'm, I prep a lot of meals ahead of time and because um, I'm usually taking them with me on the road. I frequently eat breakfast in the car, sitting in traffic, eat lunch in the office, eat dinner on the way to the gym. And I'm nowhere near home, you know, five days a week. So I plan ahead and I have I have ways of doing that, you know, ways of keeping the food um, not only ready to walk out the door, but to keep it fresh while I'm, while I'm on the go. So for people of my kind of lifestyle, um, that's important, uh, for people like Justin, Justin works from home. So he's just a few steps away from his kitchen. So, you know, he has a completely different lifestyle. So he just has to make sure he's got the stuff in the fridge, but he plans ahead too. When he goes shopping, he's like, yeah, I'm going to need about this much or that much. And, uh, you know, of course, even though he's home, he doesn't have unlimited time to cook. So, you know, understanding what you're really going to enjoy uh, versus how much time it's going to take it done versus how much time you have or you'd like to spend on it. A lot of people enjoy having a rotisserie chicken or something. And that's an easy one you can just pick up and eat. And typically most people just eat the whole bird, you know. Um, so, you know, for convenience, that's 
that's a good thing. And a lot of people have done very well going to fast food places and just getting burger patties. So you might go to your, you know, ask at your favorite or convenient fast food place or your local family owned burger joint or whatever and say, Hey, um, you know, can you just sell me uh, burger patties and maybe eat them with cheese and maybe you don't or hell, maybe even like a little grilled onion on them. That's okay too. Right. So I was just talking about um, helping people plan ahead on what they're going to eat, you know, and I was talking about how, you know, you work from home, so you're not too far from your kitchen, whereas I'm usually away from home, you know, spend a lot of time commuting and at the office. And so I was kind of talking about the differences. And now I was talking about how if you uh, need to, you can, um, you know, go to a fast food place and order burger patties or burger patties with cheese, you know. Even, you know, not all, you know, it seems like not a lot of uh, restaurants serve hot dogs, but some of them do, right? Well, I mean, a restaurant hot dog is way overpriced, in my opinion. That's why I say just run to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, but if you're not home and you can't cook it, then that doesn't help, right? Help somebody. I don't know. Um, but you could literally go, go to walk into the big box store like Sam. They have that you know, pre cooked bacon. And you could. Scrub you, one could, of those. Um, you could just uh, walk into Sam's or Costco and get in line and buy some hot dogs there, you know, all cooked up and ready to go. Have not tried it yet. That would be interesting. I know they have some big long wieners at the Sam's Club, so I'm going to have to try that one day. Yeah. That'll be an Instagram. There you go. And uh, you're famous for going to Wendy's and getting a... Uh, Baconators? Yeah. So they have both a breakfast Baconator and then a, like a lunch or dinner Baconator, right? So tell people what that's like. So the traditional Baconator, I just go up. Well, actually, I use the app. Um, so you just use the app. And apps are great. So like if you're like me and don't like to talk to people, um, you could just get a bunch of fast food apps. And they make ordering really easy where you can just customize on the screen and so that you make sure people that, that are making your order are making it correctly. Um, now, if I am going up to the actual teller or to the screen the to teller. place my order, the teller. You, you order food at the bank all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The teller. The food teller. There you go. <laughs> the food teller. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. What else, what else are they called? I don't know. Cashier. Order taker. Turn, Okay, but they're not the cashier. You're not paying with them. It's a different person that you pay. That's window two. Oh, when you're doing a drive through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I see. Because you said walk up. So I was thinking inside the restaurant. I don't remember saying walk up. No, it's all right. I remember all right. for you. All right. At least one of us are keeping track of my life. <laughs> um, well, when I go through the drive through, um, I just tell them, hey, could I get two baconators? I say lettuce wrapped. I'm not going to eat the lettuce, but just to make it easy, I'm going to get two Baconators, lettuce wrapped, um, no sauce, and it, it comes out just right. Yeah, I used to order a lot of stuff uh, lettuce wrapped because they were used to that, you know, and you just throw the lettuce away, right? But um, I found out now that just about everywhere I go, they're more than happy to just put it in a bowl or, if, you know, if you go to In-N-Out, uh, they just put it in a box, you know, so... In and Out's famous because they make a Flying Dutchman, which is just uh, meat patties with cheese, you know. But they they know when you go, I uh, want you know, give me give me a six Flying Dutchman, <laughs> and they know what that is, right? So you just you just order that. So more and more, you find that that restaurants are used to people ordering things without bread or whatever sauce and stuff like that, and. So far, but I, I don't I haven't been anywhere that didn't accommodate me. So don't be afraid to ask to get it the way you like it. Um, you know, to whatever it is you, you want to do to meet your goals. So yeah, and just uh, you know, your your favorite um, you know, some fast food places are a little dry. If you can get bacon, uh, I suggest getting bacon. It helps with a little bit of moisture on there. Um uh even but in the morning even you get something like sausage patties so like i've done sausage mm -hmm. patties from mcdonald's with like bacon 
Um, I don't really touch their eggs. I don't know. I think it was just I was in the car and eggs was going to be a bit more difficult to eat. But, you know, if you go to Denny's or any other basic restaurant, you can get steak and eggs or burnt beef and eggs. Sometimes it'll be too early and they won't have it on the grill. But they, typically all restaurants have steak and eggs in the morning. Um, so you got to pay more or an omelet. Sometimes it's make your own omelet. And some places will offer ground beef as a thing that you it's something yeah. you can put in the omelet. So something's like ham. Uh, I remember I went to one place. I got like ham, sausage, ground beef, bacon, and like shrimp or some other seafood in it. And that was bomb. Yeah, I've ordered um, egg on the burger when I go places many times. That's like a lot of places will do that for you. And I don't know, charge you like a dollar for an egg or something like that. So you can usually get them fried or scrambled and they'll put it on top for you and you know, a hamburger patty with bacon, eggs, and cheese is pretty damn delicious. Yeah, and the key to eating out on carnivore is just to ask questions. You know, um, that's basically the name of the game is ask questions. What's in this? Um, and if you want to go there, you can always play the food allergy card. Um, and they essentially have to uh, comply. You know, interesting enough i've never had to do that i always thought i was going to be pulling that card and i never had to so but it's, i guess it's good to keep in your back pocket right right yeah um especially because sometimes uh the restaurant doesn't know what's in something sometimes or what yeah. something's cooked on or at least the person you're talking to doesn't know right, right exactly yeah. and then you know so then the allergy card may be uh, necessary now i know a place like five guys uh when you say oh uh, no bun or whatever they ask preference or or allergy i say preference just because i'm trying not to be a pain in the butt and i seem to do okay so long as i don't eat the bun uh but i think more of that is being picked up by more restaurants as well them being more forthcoming uh haven't done subway carnivore yet haven't done jack-in-the-box haven't done burger king um i think i've pretty much done almost everywhere else um, yeah the problem with subway is i mean like that layer of meat they give you minuscule right so i don't know how many meats you'd have to buy for a meal and uh, there's nothing wrong with eating wings, especially a lot of places do uh, wings that uh, are either fried in tallow or they're baked. So you don't have to worry about eating a bunch of vegetable oil. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a lot of damn wings to make up a meal. A lot, you know. So that's, you can do it, but um, that's the disappointment I find. It's like, I don't know how many wings it would take to fill up, but it's more than I've ever ordered <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so... So I think the next thing we should cover is what to expect or what negative symptoms and changing they might find. Um, Can so, I preface that real quick? Sure. Just because you hear that people have negative symptoms doesn't mean you will. Because lots of people start this and don't have any problems. But of course, it's the people that have problems that you usually hear from, right? Right, right, exactly. Uh, well, we're, we're trying to give a well, well-rounded view, I think. So sure. um, just in case people run into stuff. Um, so, you know, there's the quote unquote keto flu um, adaptive period, um, which is more or less, I think these days could be attributed to carbohydrate withdrawal or exogenous glucose withdrawal. And so you get your typical withdrawal symptoms. Uh, could be anything from a headache to diarrhea to constipation to but I think I've know, even heard a I, couple cases of, of a fever. I um, think I think hot. it's typically people, you know, the the most common symptom seems to be just being lethargic or tired. Correct. Fatigue. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Uh, definitely throw that in there. But any of your typical cold or flu symptoms, people may experience while transitioning. Um, now, that might be a sign that you're transitioning too quickly and you may temporarily have to throw in some carbohydrate. Um, now, you would want to try and keep it clean. So maybe some um, like raspberries and blackberries have very low uh, carbohydrates and very low anti-nutrients in them. 
Uh, but they also have seeds that are irritating to a lot of people. So if you're sensitive to seeds, then you know you might want to avoid that. Right. Um, you have good old Raymond Nazan's banana trick. Uh, he would tell his clients to eat a banana with a meal um, or once in the day to help them transition through. Um, that is if the carbohydrate withdrawal is just too much and, and you just can't get that other engine in the body pumping quite right in my opinion yeah and and i want to i want to stress the point that the carbohydrate withdrawal is something that's been well established um by a number of doctors who've gone through this themselves um you know the withdrawal from carbohydrate for some people is very similar to like opiate withdrawal or something like that now some people they have surgery or whatever and they get some codeine or some uh What's a real common um, Vicodin? Vicodin or something like that. You get some dental work done, or knee surgery or whatever. And and uh, when they stop taking it, they don't notice anything. But there's plenty of people that do. They go they go through withdrawal just after taking that for, you know, say a week or something. And so the symptoms of carbohydrate withdrawal is very similar. And some people, I, I assume it seems like, relatively small portion of the population has those symptoms, but it's a real thing. Right, exactly. Um, and then the other part is um, electrolyte balance um, because of your body uh, requiring more uh, sodium typically. Uh, when you're eating carbohydrates, you're gonna have like a, uh, what would you say? You will you retain water and sodium right and that's often the first weight you lose is when you stop eating carbohydrates your body's like oh i don't need to carry around this water and this extra sodium right so when you lose that that extra water and that sodium you've also lost a buffer that you're used to having right and your body hasn't necessarily adapted to not having that buffer solution of sodium and water so some people need to supplement some some electrolytes and when we say electrolytes we're talking about sodium or table salt potassium and magnesium right those are typically the electrolytes that we're we're referring to and salt is the easy fix right for most of it right and and typically if people are having um leg cramps headaches stomach cramps things of that nature typically adding in more salt uh, salt to taste bare minimum you may need uh, even more salt than that uh can you have too much salt kind of not <laughs> you know you'd get well, tired if you're of not it. eating carbs right so let's talk right. about high blood pressure and sodium sodium sensitivity right because only a small percentage of the population actually is salt sensitive uh, uh hypertension so if the, if you have an issue with hypertension or you th think you might just monitor your blood pressure have your doctor check it have the have them check it at the pharmacy or something like that right but once you stop eating carbohydrates most people's uh sodium sensitive hypertension goes away so but it is something to keep an eye on right uh could be problematic if you are just so happen to be one of those people um the other thing that could happen uh, is, of course, uh, diarrhea. Um, that could be due to a quick change, and you're dumping out a bunch of dead uh, biome uh, and layers of your stomach, which is completely normal. Um, now, if you're like constantly on the toilet all through the day, you may need to throw in some fiber uh, for yourself to help slow things down a bit um or or dial back on the fat or dial back on the a fat. lot of people just eat too much fat and they're not ready to absorb it and that'll cause you to that'll basically give you diarrhea or loose stool so and that's another reason why you might need more sodium because if you're if you're urinating a lot or you have a diarrhea or you're sweating a lot or something like that um that can that you know you're going to lose electrolytes and it you know when you lose electrolytes, you essentially become dehydrated because you need both the water and the electrolytes to be hydrated. So 
Uh, and like we said earlier, if you drastically change your diet, you might well be, you might well get constipation or diarrhea. Either one can happen. But not for, not doesn't happen to everybody. We're just saying some people experience this. Uh, fatigue. Um, now, if it's been like a couple of weeks and you're still constantly tired, uh, probably means you have the modern pestilence. Uh, just kidding. Um, what it might mean is you need to up your fat. Um, maybe you're eating too lean and you need to up your fat to hit at least that 50% in grams, I would suggest threshold. Plus, maybe um, if you're having like low energy or energy crashes, that, that could be what's going on there. Yeah. And, you know, in the beginning, uh, we're all trying to sort out what what uh, what works best for us. Typically, like we said, uh, you know, people typically start by eating ribeye. That's like really common. More and more, you find there's a lot of people that that find that something leaner like a New York strip or a strip loin steak. Um, those uh, are better for them. They don't need the fat. A lot of people talk about eating fat, 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 fat. Some people that works good, some it doesn't. I don't eat any tallow, duck fat, lard, any of those rendered animal fats. I rarely even put butter in the pan. I'm usually just cooking with leftover fat from a beef patty or, you know, a piece of pork or whatever. I don't seem to need any fat. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how much we got to talk about this, but I, I've gotten to eating less, leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner meat. So... I started an experiment a long time ago. I bought a prime ribeye, ate the whole thing, saw, just to see how I felt. Then I went to a choice ribeye. Then I went to a select ribeye. And that means that the, the prime has a lot of fat. The choice has a medium amount of fat. And the select has the least amount of fat. That's how meat's graded in the United States. And I know it's different in other countries. But uh, eventually I realized that all the... Um, the ribeyes were just too fatty for me. And what would happen is start eating fatty piece of meat and it just shuts my appetite down. And then I'm not getting enough protein. So then I went to ribeyes, did that for a while. It was good. It was definitely better. And now I'm just eating sirloin. Um, I pretty much rare, you know, very, uh, very lean, uncooked sirloin. I eat, and uh, I seem to do best on that. So, on the other side, our buddy Emily, she uh, she's had to cut back on the protein. She's actually just backing off on the protein. I don't think she's actually increasing the fat. But there we have a good example of how what works best for an individual isn't necessarily um, going to be even close to what works for somebody else. And that, in, in my mind, that's what we're all working towards is figuring out how much fat versus how much protein works for you. I totally agree. Um, to sum up, or if I had one word, one sentence, I would say just eat more meat. Just start there by eating more meat. Um, however much eating, uh, however much meat you are eating currently, eat more. <laughs> Essentially, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Um, and and uh, that's kind of the effect that I've had a lot of family members. I've had a lot of family that now I've had family that have also gone carnivore, um, but I've I've had a, a, a chunk of my family more than I thought that have just honestly and openly increased their meat consumption, and they attribute it to me. So that's pretty cool. And what are the health benefits of that? I I don't know um, exactly without them changing other stuff as well, but. Um, hey, at least they're getting a little extra nutrient, a little extra vitamins, maybe, and, and some collagen and some fat for the brain. And I feel good about that. And so you can start that simply. You can keep everything in and just prioritize meat, or you can make it a game with yourself. Like, okay, you do want the new Chips Ahoy Rainbow Splash or whatever it is. But before you that go ahead, I think it is a thing. But <laughs> before you. Uh, allowed to have it, uh, you've got to eat, you know, a pound and a half of meat first, you know? Yeah, that's something. a good strategy. It's like, okay, man, if you really think you need that, whatever, um, try and eat all the stuff that 
you should eat first and then see if you still feel like eating it or maybe you'll have a little and, and not as much as you would have had you know yeah and uh tom you totally missed your spot for a line there from your favorite band you're gonna have to tell me it's not coming to me <laughs> you don't get any pudding unless you finish your meat <laughs> right <laughs> How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Right. That's a good point. They, mm -hmm. they were making some sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, in, you know, if uh, here, here's the other thing. Well, you find yourself going to the store and you're thinking like, mm, I'm going to get a bag of chips and a soda. And you'd be better off just going and buying a package of bologna and eat that. Eat that package of bologna and see if you still want the chips and the soda because – pretty sure you're not gonna want it anymore so i mean some people will but but uh yeah you, you could literally do that i know people look at processed meat like it's the worst thing in the world but processed meat is way better for you than most of the other crap that they sell out there you know and it definitely you don't want to be eating fake meat you know the plant-based meat is terrible so um you know we get it people people are vegan tip you know oftentimes for reasons other than health and they think that it's healthier but um the fake meat is is something to avoid so i wouldn't that wouldn't be my go-to i I'd, i think you'd be better off eating literally bologna or a hot dog or something than you would something like that or a sausage or something so yeah don't be like me back in 2015 14 spending 16 dollars on a plant-based double burger at a bougie restaurant the bougie restaurant i would have been much better spending three dollars on an entire pack of bologna and just eating it yeah right well that's the thing i mean uh you know what is a let's see i'm gonna guess uh, like a package of like your typical bologna it probably goes from like two to four dollars or something you know that's quite a bit of new quite a bit of fat and protein right there you know I mean, it is ground up um, different parts of animals. You know, a lot of the hot dogs and bologna, they're actually like pork, beef, and chicken mixed together. But so what? You know, it's better than, you know, I mean, what the hell is in all those pastries and cupcakes and cookies and fake meat and, you know, all those other things you might, you know, just look at the chemicals in like diet sodas. Look how many unpronounceable chemicals are in there, you know. that's a, That's some bad news right there. So... Yeah, if you, it, it's not a bad way to start. And, and you know, I when I'm in a pinch and I'm out of food and I'm on the road, um, I I wouldn't hesitate to run in and, and grab some bologna or string cheese or, you know, some of that easy stuff. Um, you're much better off doing that. And, and you might be craving something, um, but give yourself an opportunity to eat something else first. And then it gets easier the more you do it, doesn't it? Definitely. Um, and hey, if you're eating a uh, bologna and hot dogs, you're also eating nose to tail. There you uh, go. Now I do want to uh, literal noses and literal tails. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and I do want to take a second just to rag on about the uh, no organs are not necessary on a carnivore diet. Um, and there seems to be a bit of, I don't know if you'd call it research coming out of how organs may actually be harmful more specifically possible vitamin a toxicity uh from having uh too much vitamin a in, in like liver having too much of it um so it could be actually detrimental and not helpful um your vitamins and nutrients and things that need to be in balance um in going through this journey i've really had to learn less is actually more and your body is a phenomenal machine that is beyond amazing at self-regulation. Uh, so no, save your money. You do not need to buy the supplements. No, you don't need to chick choke down yeah, raw unless, liver. You know, I'd like to caveat that with unless you know for some reason you have a deficiency, right? Which could happen. It could be pre-existing before you even start um, changing your diet. So, but if you don't have some strong indication that you have a deficiency or you haven't had, you know, gone to your doctor and asked them to test you for something, 
then don't assume you have to supplement or eat a bunch of organ meat. And I don't know of any actual examples of people getting like vitamin A poisoning from eating liver, but supposedly it does happen. And there's a lot of people pushing stuff like that and this concept of nose to tail. And, you know, as you find out, you rarely hear anybody eating tails or noses. And, uh, you know, uh, if you don't really like it, don't, don't, don't be choking, choking it down. But if you love liver, eat liver. I eat I, one of my things, the ways I like to eat liver is Brunschweiger. And again, every oh, it's processed meat. It's basically pork fat and pork liver with seasoning. There's a little bit of starch in it. And, and I think the primary seasoning is marjoram. And I don't notice any negative side effect from that. It is very fatty. So I try to get my protein in first because that, I run the risk of that fat shutting my appetite down. But that's my only my only uh, my only uh, sort of caveat for eating Brunschweiger. You know, it's delicious. Uh, and when I do eat liver, all liver livers taste different. You know, beef and pork liver are much better raw, and pork liver has less of the funk that beef liver does. You know, and uh, sheep liver sheep liver tends to have that grassy uh, gamey sort of flavor kind of like wild wild meat does so i'm not a big fan i have had some pate that was pretty decent but again pate is always it's like brunchwagger it's basically mixing fat and liver together you know and seasoning it so that's okay and i love me some menudo you can get the menudo with no no uh no hominy or corn or maize or whatever you want to call it or tree pus or something like that, you know, that's fine. Eat it if you like it. I eat it when I, but I don't eat it that often because it's just not around, you know? Right. And uh, I guess the way to tie it up is if you're still struggling, whether sticking to the quote unquote eating plan uh, or having some rebound syndrome sim symptoms or you're struggling with carbohydrate withdrawal, get a coach. Uh, there's many coaches, me and Tom coach. Sure. Uh, we're certainly here to help you out. Leave a comment, come to a live, ask your questions. Um, we'll, we'll respond the best that we can. We're not the best at responding to comments, unfortunately. Um, we'll try to put the- Respond to all of them, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. So <laughs> Tom's <don't>... amazing <laughs> responding to comments. Uh, and then we do have our, uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, the links are at the bottom, alloutlife.carnivore. Um, we also have the Meat Mosaic Telegram group. I think the link is also in the description there. You can join in and so great little group of people oh, yeah. there. We have a new, I forgot, we do have a new Facebook group and there's also the Telegram group. They're both called Meat Mosaic and you guys are all welcome. Like Justin said, go ahead and leave comments. If there's something we didn't cover, we can cover it next time, or we can just answer it in the comments for you. So uh, the more people who comment, the better. The more people who watch this, the better for the channel. The more people who pass the link on to somebody else that it might help, the better. The more it gets posted around Facebook, the better, you know. So any of that, we all appreciate, and it helps the, the effort. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, why do we do this, Justin? To become rich and famous. Oh. Right. Not going to happen. No, we do this to help. We do this to help people, you know. Yes, so we do it to help that's people. That's why we're here and that's why we've done it. And that's why we've got over 300 videos on the channel. Of course, I started it by myself, but, you know, it's been great having. It didn't be get real until I showed up. Didn't get real till the party didn't start till Justin showed up. Thank go. God he put it on his calendar because. <laughs> I'm always calling them and saying, hey, where are you? We're supposed to start now. Hello? Well, you know, the hero, the star always shows up five to ten minutes late. So Is that go. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't you watch any movies? Okay. I watch a lot of movies. <laughs> Haven't noticed that trend yet. So. But I'll keep an eye out for it. Fashionably late. But anyways, uh, Alien Drone Service, Lewis, Abru, Christina... Raymond Neff, thank, thanks for being there in the live chat. Yeah, we do these lives. You guys can um, chat with us live during the video. And, of course, you can always leave comments after this video is on YouTube. Go, go ahead and leave a little comment, you know, even if, it's, even if you could do it anonymously or, you know, um, naturally send all the hate mail over to Justin. 
So he Hey, I didn't say anything offensive offensive this episode. I just tried to start a fight with you. I don't even this think time. We, I don't think we use any swear words. We might actually get monetized. It's gonna be wow. amazing. Amazing. So but we appreciate everybody here and we love the feedback and we love talking to people, love building uh, communities. You know, if you or somebody in your family or somebody you you're close to has uh, um, autism spectrum disorder or some Asperger or something like that, there you join autistic carnivores on Facebook. You can join Meat Mosaic on Facebook. I've got we've got a bunch of other random Facebook groups and like we said, we got the Telegram group. People message each other all the time. You can find uh, both of us. You just look for Thomas Allen Clark on um, Instagram if that's your thing. I've got a little bit of a presence there. I'm still not sure why I bother with Instagram, but you know, other than looking at pictures, I, I don't get it. But I do it. I do it because the kids love it. All right. So until next time, eat some meat. Feel better. Feel better. And whatever, whatever you do, you do don't, don't fall, fall down, down the, the carb hole.